uh, those reports. They are looking in the wrong direction. It is not in our direction that they should be looking at. They should be rather looking at the executive. When they said uh, resolutions are not law, they just advise. And you give general advice. And the person you have advised has refused to take the advice. That does not stop us because the Constitution allows us to continue to make our resolution. So we keep making the resolution. You understand? By the time we put them together, I believe one day Nigeria will now realize that it's very important that when the two chambers come together on a particular issue, and resolve for the particular issue of making this one person. That is that two distribution. You know, that distribution from the two chambers must become a law. When the story of the year 2013 is told, many will remember how the political crisis within the ruling People's Democratic Party seeped into the National Assembly. It even led to a free for all in the House of Representatives. The political crisis reached a climax when 37 lawmakers defected from the ruling party to the main opposition party, the All Progressive Congress. Point of order. Ahead of 2014, this analyst is not confident that federal lawmakers would accomplish much in the coming year. Unfortunately, it is a period that we are going into election, so many of the National Assembly members they will be, you know, um, struggling to go and get party membership, I mean party uh, nomination for their re-election. Therefore, the time, the amount of time they would give to, you know, legislative work is going to be less than the time they have given in 2013. Nevertheless, in 2014, it will be interesting to see how the balance of power would be in the National Assembly. For the first time in the history of Nigeria, the ruling party may not have majority control of the National Assembly. Now one wonders, would more lawmakers leave the PDP for the APC? And will the leadership of both chambers be retained? How will this dynamics affect lawmaking? These are some of the questions that the year 2014 hopefully would answer. Now, one issue that was a major point of confrontation between the parliament and the executive in 2012 was the way motions and resolutions passed by the parliament appeared to be ignored. Now, this issue continued throughout 2013. We had a chat with the chairman of the House Committee on Legislative Compliance, Maru Fatai, on these and other issues. But I'd, li I'd like to understand from you, what would you say are some of the challenges you've observed from heading this committee for some time now? Well, the mandate of my committee is, uh, number one, to ensure that uh, all resolutions and petitions that are resolved within the House are complied with by the relevant agency or institutions. And then um, other leg of our uh, of our mandate is to in house thing to ensure that uh, those that attend conferences, seminars, courses, uh, to monitor the, uh, the effect that those courses are attended and the outcome for us to be able to present the matter before the the leadership, the the uh, those information provided to the leadership, of, leadership of the house and the house of res representatives. Okay, now speaking about your resolutions now, is it, will it not be right to say it looks like not the attitude of one or some agencies, but it appears the executive's position not to um, take most of your resolutions or pay attention to some of the resolutions and motions that are passed by the House? Well, we first of all must look into history. Why committee on legislative compliance in the first place? During the last uh, assembly, it was discovered that uh, executives were ignoring the resolution of the House. So the, uh, the House had to set up that committee. And the idea is, okay, maybe they always, the executive on their part will always say, we are not aware of such resolution. And the idea of the committee is to ensure compliance by making sure that we follow through and get the other side to be, to be aware and act on them. And it's not that we are not really having results. The complications will come up when 
the, the executive on his own part read meanings into our resolutions. And we have done a lot of work on the ground. We have just been able to secure the payment of uh, those that were released by FRSC uh, since 1999. Uh, they are paying them their gratuity and retiring them. That is an achievement. And apart. During the period of um, when there some local government money was seized, we intervened and uh, the executive paid return, start pay, uh, uh, return to payment of those. Uh, it's only those naughty issues that when it comes to the issue of misinterpretation of our intention that the executive have problem in implementation. In most cases too, we, we you see we, some people will approach the House of Representatives if they are if they are wrong or something, they don't have capacity to go to court. So that will go through public petition. You see them people bringing in uh, petition from their constituents yes. on and the petition committee will work on it returning back to the house the house in plenary will now work on them and approve and at that point we as committee will now follow through to ensure compliance the in reality there is this argument of resolution is effect does it really have this, the backing of law on its own but our argument has always been that we have the power of appropriation for any, on any ministry. Now, you will always come to us to convince us on the need for you, to, uh, for the house to cooperate and approve money for the next year. At that point, you are asking for our, our cooperation. But when you have an issue with us and you are not ready to go into, you are not ready to, to, be fair, uh, to look into it the way the National Assembly is looking into it, then that, that, this is what we call similar hostility. That is, we, we, uh, we're coming. So, what I'm trying to say in essence is this if you happen, or if one way or the other you have wronged somebody, there are procedures for you to sack somebody in, in the ministry or para starter. Yeah. And that person approached us that, no, I was wrongly, wrongfully uh, dismissed. And the house looked into the matter and said, please reabsorb this man. And you refused. And you now come in December to ask for appropriation. That is where we have issues. And this committee is now moving her head. We are writing all the, all the com uh, um, committees that are in charge of various MDAs. That we are going to notify them on some parastatus and ministries that are not cooperating with the uh, National Assembly in matter of resolutions. So that first of, they first of all must deal with that matter first before they talk about appropriation. That is our less than faction now. Okay, now you, you've spoken about a lot of what the committee and the House has done, but do you think there's need for legislation to give weight to motions and the resolutions passed by the House in such a way that it will become mandatory for the executive to pay attention to it and not this method we have now where they can or may decide not to even pay attention? If I may go in, it, 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 you see, all over the all over the world, we always have these misinterpretations of issues between the executive and the legislature. It's a normal thing. Well, what we have presently is that it is beyond normal. What I mean by beyond normal is that it's easy for a minister to run to the president because of the similar disagreement between the uh, executive and the legislature. You see, a minister who has refuse to do the proper thing, run to the president as well, because this legislature are fighting you, that's why they're harassing me. And that's the situation we find ourselves now. And the idea that when they come before the, the legislature, the idea that they have, they, are, they all they know everything. And they don't really want correction. They don't really want, even when you are pinpointing to them that, look at the situation. If you are, if, for instance, the argument we have now, at December, we are talking of less than 40% implementation of budget. And you as executive can still come up and still be accusing the of what? You, you understand what I'm saying? So they, it's like the, the ministers and the head of our other pastors, major pastors, are running under that cover to, to the presidency. But I also have the president to blame on this. In a situation where you have, you have an, an, uh, a minister or head of a pastor who 
has an issue with the legislature 